job that should take a quarter of the day or half a day would end up being. <laughs> yeah, I love those neighbors. Yeah. So it's the first time I've seen a leaf plow like live and in action. What um, how come you want to get rid of that? You want to sell that? Yes. Um, it's just doesn't work for my setup because I only have the one truck, one trailer, and so it, having the mower on the trailer when it's 18 foot trailer and I have a 16 foot box, I only have two foot left for equipment, which that takes up a lot more than the two feet. So yeah. it's not practical. With the distance I drive for my jobs, for me to take this out to job, use it, come back, unload it, then go back and load the leaves up, and you know, time is money, and it makes me less efficient. Yeah, it sounded good in theory, but not the case <laughs> in my situation. And you were saying uh, you have a push blower too. What is it, Little Wonder or Billy Go? Yeah, Little. It's a Little Wonder 13 horsepower, not self-propelled. Feels like it's about a ton, <laughs> but um, it'll move some leaves. But, but yeah. it'll, it'll kill you. Oh, yeah, process. absolutely. Yeah, so self propelled is definitely the way to go. I would say so, yeah. yeah. Everybody kept trying to tell me self propelled won't go up hills or inclines or decline, you know, mm -hmm. but I think they were full of it. I think this is pretty interesting how you have the wall set up. Like, the, I noticed these hinges here. Yes. Like, this is pretty cool. This is so that you can take it apart easily. Absolutely. I have it bolted down here, but basically, you just take the bolts off. And then all that will just, once you have the bolts off, then you can just lift this up. But that keeps it, I mean, adds to the stability of the bolts to the two foot mesh side. Yeah. And you know, like here, where take the two pieces here, then you don't have to worry about any play in it at all whatsoever. Yeah. So, you know, if you get in wind gusts or whatever, the truck pulls it fine. You don't even. And then you do the same thing with the bot with the back here, yeah, right? Back. Basically, so I take the back, and long story short, it will go onto the back like that. Put a handle right here so I can just lift it up. And then these will slide down into those, and then that creates a box. And then I have a mesh tarp that I put over top of it that allows it to breathe and whatnot. Um, I used to use regular tarps, but then the wind would just beat them to death. Yeah. So the mesh tarps, you can get, you got the 18 foot one by, 18 by 10 foot from Amazon for under 90 bucks. Yeah. And it lasts forever. So I'm here with Brett with 365 Yard Care and Landscaping. Very interesting. I asked him what the meaning of 365 because you know I've seen you on social media like whether you're commenting or posting something and I just was I never I never realized that you were local because like there's another guy like 804 you know lawn care or whatever right. like just you know there's different guys out there 804 fishing or whatever and I'm like well I know that's local because that's our area code 804 but uh, 365 I'm like what area code is that <laughs> right. I, I didn't realize but you said it's uh, for 365 days of the year and yard care versus lawn care so basically you just want things to be more um, you know, you don't want to be like uh, kind of pigeonholing yourself, you right. know, like people think, oh, that's all you do is lawn care or whatever. Right. So you try to be creative and think of ways to, you know, get the word out there and market your business in a, in a different way. Right. Year right? round services. Basically, we do, you know, grass cutting, hedge trimming, you know, redoes, landscapings. Right. Year rounds, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter. Right. Snow removal. And how long have you been in business? So this business has been, I've been doing lawn care now for about five years. Okay. And then I've recently started with the name change uh, this year. Okay. And um, and you said you've, so you told me interesting, bef uh, interesting, interestingly enough, you told me before that when your name was different, it was your first name, right? right. So it was like Brett's, Brett's Lawn, lawn care. care. And, and then you switched it specifically because of why? So with the Brett's Lawn Care, I was getting lower end calls. People more so looking for somebody working out of the bed of the pickup truck, low end jobs, low end work. And it just wasn't what I needed. It wasn't getting the bills paid and 
it wasn't the type of work I truly cared to do. And immediately, as soon as I closed that and started 360 yard care and landscaping, those calls pretty much, I still get one here or there, but those calls pretty much immediately stopped. You know. it's, it's, it's like perception almost, right? right. It's like they, in, in customers' minds, the people that are looking for, you know, what they would think are reputable and, you know, good companies, they look for company names. Not to say that, you know, there's plenty of landscapers and longer companies out there with their, their name, but it's, it's just kind of one of those things where, like, Brett's Lawn Care, even if it was, like, Brett's Landscaping Plus or something, that would probably would have sounded even better than, right. like, Brett's Lawn Care. So that, that you know, and again, there's nothing wrong with that either, right? There's still work to be had. You, oh, yeah. you did got plenty of work, but it wasn't the kind of work that you wanted. Right. So, again, it comes down to what do you want, and it's just a very interesting point to make that depending on what you name your company, how you name it, I mean, just... Brett's Lawn Care, Brett's Landscaping Plus, or 365 Yard Care, we've gone from one extreme to the other, and all three of those different names, one of which I made up, you know, could just be a, a totally different mind shift in somebody's, you know, when they're looking for a, a, a service provider. So that's a very interesting point to bring up, and I'm glad that you and I think also made that the choice. appearance makes a difference. Right. Because when I first started, it was a Subaru station wagon with a push mower or, you know, push uh, handheld blower, we did. Right. And then that progressed, you know, and then I had a small trailer from Lowe's hooked up to the Subaru. Right. So, you know, things progress. So if you start today and things will grow, you know what I mean? Right. But I mean, we all have to start can, somewhere. Yeah. But when you do have the chance and opportunity to set your sights way ahead right. and get there. Right. You know what I mean? Because now with the logo, the truck, the appearance, and whatnot, I think that also plays a part. Right. And with the name change. I agree. And Brett was nice enough to reach out to me through social media and say, hey, you know, I'm local too. Why don't you stop by and, and check out my leaf setup, you know, my fall, winter, you know, services that I offer and, and see if maybe some of it might be something you can apply or help you in your quest, you know, because he knows that I've been trying to focus on what I can do now this year for next year, this time of the year, how I can get more money in, more services, keep my, my lawn care more year round. And when I have employees again, keep them working so I don't have to worry about what do I do with them and unemployment possibly and also the kind of stuff. So I appreciate you letting me come out here and taking some of your time and checking out your setup. One more quick question. What, how long have you been doing leaf removal? Ever since the beginning. Ever since the beginning. Yeah. So what, can you just take us through a little evolution of like how you started, like what you started with equipment and, and type of leaf jobs to, to now? All right, basically started first with the 10 foot trailer, putting two foot sides um, and just use blowers, brakes and tarps. Um, and it would work, but the pro what would kill us is the amount of trips to the dump. You know, a job that should take a quarter of the day or half a day would end up being. <laughs> yeah, I love those neighbors. Yeah, it's like would, they did on purpose. <laughs> yeah, would end up taking all day or a day and a half. You know, because we'd put the leaves in, and little did I realize I was telling my guy to step on leaves to compact them. He wasn't. So that was that was a killer. You yeah. Know? Then went into a 12, 16, 18 foot trailer, and now a found that the leaf plow doesn't work for me. Push blower doesn't work for my needs. And you know, the best thing is backpack blowers, get them in, the, if they're in the backyard, get them in the piles, rake them on the tarps, drag them out to the street, suck them up with a debris loader. Now, it might be faster to load them onto the trailer while you got the tarp, but what makes a difference with the debris loader is the volume that you can carry. Because right. it mulches it up and I can get probably five times the amount of leaves yes. in the trailer with the debris loader versus putting them in there with the tarp, stepping on them. So absolutely, it is faster to load them with the tarp rather than the debris loader, but at the same time, you can only carry a fifth of what right. you could. So, so it's about efficiency. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you got you to gotta weigh those different options out. Absolutely. That's very, very smart points that you, that you said there. So The pain is unloading, but it truly isn't that bad. With 16 feet, four feet high, seven and a half feet wide, fully loaded, me and a guy with two backpack blowers can empty this in about 35 minutes. Okay. I mean, it's no fun. It's dirty. Right. But, right. Hey, 
Right. It's, you know. Yeah. What and what what lessons have you learned? I know you told me one recent story that happened. What 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 important lessons have you learned so far in leaf removal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you do street curbside pickup, check the leaves. Don't just look at them. And say okay, give them a price because I did one. Matter of fact, over here, kind of like what the leaves are that I have there, full of mud. It actually clogged the machine up, and it was. Yeah, I had my rear end handed to me on that job. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare getting it loaded. It was a nightmare unloading it. We ended up not using the debris loader and get two guys with big mulch pitchforks and pitchforking it off the road into the trailer. Mm. And ended up having to unload the whole trailer that way with pitchforks. Wow. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's. I, that's rough. That's yeah. rough. I have my own horror story to share on a separate video one of these days when I when I get to it. But uh, my very first leaf removal, it was it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a complete nightmare. When I set the story up, you everyone that's done leaf removal will be like, oh, <laughs> you'll just know like you'll just know that that it just goes so it goes downhill after that. So and, and all the things that I did wrong just right from the beginning of the story. So um, it's a little more tragic than yours. <laughs> <Right>. but, uh, <laughs> anyway, I guess we've all been there, done that. You know, somehow or another, it's all about learning and moving on. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I avoided leaf removal. You know, I, I'm all about leaf cleanups and stuff. All my properties are, are like kind of cookie cutter HOAs that are newer neighborhoods that don't have a lot of trees with a lot of leaves and if they do they're just like backed up to woods so I can just blow them into the woods so there's not really that much trees on their property that are mature enough yet to leave a mess I have a few which is why I'm starting to think of you know ways to make that money that normally I just refer to somebody else or just avoid it and do other all kinds of other stuff just to make it look halfway decent or whatever whatever I do it takes forever so I'm looking for how to be more efficient and how to actually take on a little more of that work for the clients I already have and as I'm taking on new clients not there's been times where I've declined a, a ideal client like in neighborhoods that I'm already in but they they're like that one house on the street that's loaded with trees and I'm like I automatically thought about that every time I would do a quote right. I would automatically be like wait where's what's this what's the tree situation I would I would think the whole season through right. and how am I gonna take care of every service and sometimes people would even ask me what do you do for leaf removal and I'm like I don't do leaf removal you know like right. that's just it was just a thing I never I just stayed away from it so there was a lot of money left in the table like I've said in, in the past and that's why I want to not leave that on the table next year and see what I can do get the most for my money not get too heavy into it right right off the, the gate and just kind of work my way into more fall and winter services right. so thanks for your time man no problem I appreciate, I appreciate it. it all right